Hi, this is Tiffany Domino with HowToEntrepreneur.org, and today I want to talk to you about how to create content for a website efficiently. So the tips that I want to give you um, are tips that are intended to take you from wherever you are to increasing the efficiency of how you write content. To give you a little background um, so that you understand the efficiency I've been able to get is um, over the last year. I've written over 700,000 words of content. Um, I also published 15 books between 2014 and 2015. So as a result of writing so much content, then I've been able to like add in practices and um, you know, like weed out some habits that uh, prevent content efficiency. And I want to share some of those things with you so you can know how to create content for your website, um, how to do research for it, um, how to find good blog ideas or good website content ideas, um, where you can get more information if you want to get more information and study more on content efficiency. And so I have quite a few tips for you. Um, and so let's get started. <clears throat> so um, many businesses who choose content marketing as a strategy um, understand the importance of content in order to get customers to drive leads because that's how you drive leads online. Um, when you are offline, you drive leads by, you know, you identify there the addresses the demographics of the people you want to reach and you might physically go out to them or you might do mail or different types of uh, marketing strategies but when you're online they say content is king and so whether you decide to do ads or whether you decide to do pure content marketing by writing or um, creating video or creating audio on a website you have to um, create content and when you create content then people who are looking for content uh, who are looking for ideas who are looking for information they'll be able to search and find that especially if you know how to optimize the content but they'll be able to find that content online and it, it, gener it turns into a potential lead and a potential sale um, so contently showed that 60% of marketers believe content marketing is the best lead generation method for their businesses so as you can see this graph um, is from contently's website and it shows that this is from marketing professionals they believe that 59% believe marketing content creation is most effective for marketing purposes then you have SEO as being number two social media social networking three website design optimization blogging or guest blogging inbound tactic integration press and public release releases and then um, mobile marketing so that's really um, something to think about that shows you the importance of content creation it's not just that you're creating it because it's a hobby this is actually a proven method to drive leads what when you're online but even though um, all of those experts understand the importance 41 percent of the same marketer survey said they struggle to create content they say that they don't have an effective strategy 46 percent say that they don't have an effective strategy um, 41 percent says there's a lack of content creation and then there's inadequate budget lack of tactical integration inability to prove ROI ineffective metrics tracking lack of training or experience and lack of website control so there's um, all of these reasons why people are having challenges and obstacles to creating content online and the one that I really want to um, talk about today is the lack of an effective strategy and the lack of 
content creation. Those two things are what we'll be discussing and trying to solve today in this video. So other studies show that as many as 70% of marketers struggle with implementing a consistent content marketing strategy. So that's because for, for you, you can see 46% and 41%, that's a, a large percentage who struggle with the actual efficient and effective strategy and the content creation. So um, there are three solutions that you can do. You can either raise your budget and hire out the content marketing and people, um, you can read about the pros and cons of that, but there's a lot of people who say that, uh, who do that. And some people do it and it's very effective for them, but uh, most people who try that, it's not as effective because then you have to um, have more leadership and management and you have to have systems for that as well. Um, if you don't have a proven strategy for creating content efficiently um, and you hire it out, it's likely they might not either. And then if they're not efficient, then you have to pay more. Um, and it can be even even worse for you. Um, and the other way is to change your schedule and devote more time to content creation. Or the final way is to become more efficient. So that's really what we're focusing on here. Um, you can, after you become more efficient, then you can schedule more time and have a higher return on your time. And you can also teach other people, which will... Um, in turn give you a higher return that way as well. So uh, for most people increasing the budget and the schedule is just not an option. So it's just the most important and easiest way to actually um, you know learn to become more efficient. So the for me when I started with content marketing I began aggressively creating content when I was in the military. I was active duty. I was a full-time student at Liberty University. Um, I had a four-year-old. I was a newlywed. And I was creating all this content at the same time. And it's because I learned how to, um, for one thing, I was really passionate about what I was writing about and still am. I write about things that um, I'm very passionate about. And the second thing is that um, I've practiced and added different habits that I want to share with you. Um, and so this post, I wrote this, um, I wrote this January, January, wait, let's see, when did I write this post? April 28th, 2018. So within four months, I had written 200,000 words of content across my website, not counting what I wrote on WordPress, directly on WordPress, or not counting my email list, and um, not counting that I also had published a book in that time frame. So I was really aggressively creating content. Um, and also <laughs> at that time I was a stay home mom. I had my daughter, um, who was at that time, she would have been not even six months. So I had quite a few things going on. And so the methods that I'm sharing with you really do work. I mean, they've worked well for me. And, um, so I really want to share them with you. Okay. So number one. Um, increasing your research speed. For me, um, research is something I love, love, love to do. But if I sit down and I write and I haven't done enough research, it that's where most of the time writer's block comes from because your brain is like a bank account and you can't withdraw information that's not there. So you have to go and find inspiration. And a lot of times for me, I will do my, I'll do research. Some is focused research and a majority of it is not focused research. So for example, while I'm cooking, um, you know, while I'm, you know, 
getting dressed in the morning, um, getting my kids dressed, even when I go on walks, um, because at that time, uh, at the time of writing this post, I would go on walks a lot. I had a newborn and she was very active and it seemed like going on walks and putting her in the stroller was really um, relaxing for her. And so I would take my son, have him, he would ride his bike, she would be in the stroller and I'd be listening on my phone to some research. Um, and sometimes when you're in your car, you can research. Um, and so YouTube, Audible, different programs like that, you can use them and you can listen to books, you can listen to videos, you can kind of uh, get a thorough understanding of um, what, what, uh, what's being said about the topic you plan to write about. And so um, I usually fill up my brain bank with lots and lots of research. And a lot of times the research isn't me sitting down on a book focused research. It's um, I'm listening to audios about what I plan to write. For example, this post I'm um, or this video I'm doing on content creation and efficiency. A lot of the research I did on how other people were efficient as writers, um, I would do while I'm doing something else, while I'm cooking, while I'm cleaning, while I'm uh, doing other things, I would be listening to this research of how other people are being more efficient as writers. Then when I actually do have the time where I can sit down and focus and write, I have all of this inside of my brain bank. So then I can just flesh out all this content. So I like to listen to audiobooks, podcasts, YouTube channels, or take digital courses while I'm cooking, cleaning, exercising, driving, waiting for something or somewhere else, someone. Uh, whenever my kids are independently entertaining themselves, I am doing research. And so for you, you would have to decide if um, what tasks you're capable of multitasking um, with. For me, I know that while I'm cooking, I can listen very well. I know that, um, and it might be something you have to practice um, because it will increase your efficiency if you can multitask, if you can like listen to research while you're doing something else. Um, okay, and so I also use websites where people go to find information to do my research. So like, for example, I have Pinterest here and how to write content for a blog is what I was looking up here. And then you can see all of these different posts that come up and they can kind of give you ideas. Um, if so, for example, this video that I'm doing, if I was thinking about how to write content for a blog, I have some people who are talking about the About Me page, um, some people that are talking about content hacks that get engagement so people can't stop reading. Um, easy guide to writing blog posts. So these things can give you ideas. Um, depending on your niche, um, you can get lots of ideas. Maybe you're looking for, maybe you want to do a recipe. Um, you can get ideas for different types of recipes you can write. Um, you can look at what looks like it's doing well on Pinterest. You can look under healthy. So Pinterest is a place that I use often. I'll, uh, if I like for my own niche, um, I'll follow other people on Pinterest who are in a similar niche and then I'll start to observe what types of content are working within that niche and I'll be able to kind of like do research based off of that. I'll have a better understanding of what, um, excuse me. But I'll have a better understanding of what 
Pinterest users are going to Pinterest to look for. And if you use Pinterest as a marketing strategy, I would say this is really crucial. But since Pinterest is a search engine, it's also helpful um, for, it, it can usually translate well into Google. So I do, I do research through Pinterest like this to get ideas of different content ideas um, and to get research. And then I also go on um, YouTube. So for example, how to write content. Let's see. To write content. Okay, so YouTube will immediately give you um, keywords. How to write content for affiliate marketing, how to write content for website, for blog and Microsoft Word, for YouTube videos, for website Bangla, for Amazon affiliate on Instagram, and freelancer. So you can see how to write content is a topic that people are looking for. Now we don't have, based off of Pinterest and YouTube, we can't measure how many people are looking for that. I use other tools for that and I'll show you that in a little bit. But um, these two tools can help you get some ideas. You can see, you can also look at people in your niche um, and see what videos are working for them. Like for example, my daughter likes to watch a lot of nursery rhymes, so maybe um, I decide I want to make some nursery rhymes for kids. I can go and look at these different channels and evaluate. Um, like this channel, ready to see. This channel looks to be like a successful channel. They have 192, 198 subscribers. So I can look at things like that and make observations about um, how many views the videos get and I can um, just by way of doing observation kind of get an idea about what uh, these their target audience might really like in comparison to what they might not like so much so I use YouTube for research and I might take a look at uh, more than one channel in the niche um, like I know this is another channel my daughter likes and Dave and Ava. Um, so I'm a mom of a two year old. <laughs> so um, in this case, I could go around to different channels that are um, offering information like this. Let's apply this to a different niche. Let's go to, um, let's do, uh, okay, let's do internet marketing because that's a channel that, or, another thing that I like to study and this is a, a content creator I like to watch and as you can see he has 92,582 subscribers 497 videos so I can go and look at which videos it looks like so far the highest views is 5.3 um, so I can take a look at this video and see Oh, this one has 16,000, so SEO is a topic that people like, uh, 98,000 keyword research. Um, so based on observation, you can see what people are liking the most. And then you can go and actually watch the content, read the content that's working, and evaluate um, what, what they said, what gaps they might have missed, um what the comments said because like let's take a look let's go back to the popular one that i saw i'm back so i the joys of working from home part of when you work from home when people come by your house you have to answer the door and uh you have sometimes disruptions so <clears throat> I apologize for that, but I want to go back to what we were talking about um, with content efficiency. So um, with I was telling you about using Pinterest and we talked about using YouTube. And when you come over here and I was diving deeper into looking at this popular video um, on this YouTuber in my niche. Um, and 
so what you can do is go down and you can look at uh, the comments and you can see what additional questions people had um, so like here goes a question so before we make a review about one product we have to make a list blog post about that product and other similar ones and before that we have to make a guide post that needs to that specific kind of product so this person is asking a question and so basically um, you can do research to find out what gaps there are by um, evaluating what areas people still have questions on with content that's already out there and already popular and working. And the same thing goes with going on uh, Amazon. So with Amazon, if you look up subjects that are popular um, we looked up nursery rhymes. Uh, you can check out products. You can check out books that are popular. And um, based off of these books, you can kind of get an idea of what people are liking. Um, you can go into the books and find out from the reviews what exactly people liked about it and maybe what additional information they might want. Now this applies to any niche. And so you can uh, go and depending on what niche you are, for example, um, content writing. So everybody writes your guide to creating ridiculously good content. Um, so we can hear content marketing the story engine so you can see there's lots of books here that talk about content writing on Amazon and I can drill down into what people like I can look at the book open it up and see what topics this book went over um, let's say okay Everybody writes, writing is a habit, not an art. Um, high school rules, publishing is a privilege. Um, the most important words and ideas at the beginning of each sentence follow a writing GPS. Uh, show, don't tell. There's lots of content here that I can use um, to evaluate what's out there in the market already. And I can take this same uh, approach to look at the to look at the um, reviews the good and the bad ones and evaluate what people didn't like so this one is a one star the book is good the author is amazing but Amazon is sending out a different book than what's pictured okay so that's not really um, valuable information and you can read a lot of the reviews are thorough enough that you can evaluate what exactly did the customers like about what was out there and then once you understand what they liked you can double you can double down on what they liked and use that to do the uh, skyscraper technique so let's go over um, back to my post and so I have you can evaluate what's currently working in your niche. Um, Brian Dean from Backlinko talks about the skyscraper method. And in the skyscraper method, you evaluate what's working, you create a better version of it, and you share that with people who want to see it. So as you can see with content writing, um, I've been able to show you that people are looking for information about that on Amazon. Um, people are looking for information about that on Pinterest and on YouTube and so I can create I can use that information look at what's already on YouTube look at what's already on Pinterest look at what's already on Amazon and create something more exhaustive more engaging um, maybe give them more technical skills um, maybe you know whatever um, they're missing I can create something better.
That's the goal. And I'm, I'm not being arrogant um, because uh, I may not be able to create something that's better, but that I'm just trying to tell you the overall goal of the skyscraper technique is to create something that's even better than what's currently in the market, um, to analyze the competition out there, and to share what you have with those audiences that who are already interested in a solution for that. So, um, okay. In keeping with the skyscraper technique, another tool that I use is um, I use Jaxi. And Jaxi will help you to evaluate the actual numbers, how many people are searching for um, what you're about to create, how to write content for a website. Now, it pulls the numbers from Google and also from Bing and from Yahoo. And so you can take these numbers and it'll give you an average of how many people are searching for this every month. Now, um, you have to take this information with a grain of salt because it's not going to be 100% um, accurate because the numbers change. Sometimes people will search for a topic in November that they don't search for in June. And so you kind of have to um, take this information and, and use it as a part of your research, but not base your entire research on this demand and supply information. So as you can see, um, the average search for how to write a how to write content for a website is 118 people that are searching for that on average. And if I was to rank in the first page um, on, for that topic, I could get about 21 visitors for that. Um, there are 69 other people competing for that keyword. And so it's telling me that that's a good one to write about. Um, now this doesn't um, pull information from YouTube. There are other tools uh, to do that. One of the main tools that content creators, YouTubers use to find the, the exact metrics for demand and supply on YouTube is called TubeBuddy. Um, and it gives you similar information, uh, how many people are searching for it, um, how much, uh, how many people are competing for it, information like that. So um, I don't personally use TubeBuddy right now, but I know that it's a similar tool that does this, um, gives you the more accurate numbers so that you'll have the research, you'll have the background data from like a tool like Pinterest or YouTube, and then you can take that and also get the metrics. Another nice thing that you can do just by Googling or by going to Bing, going to Yahoo, you can actually manually go to Google and um, search in how to write content for a website and see which articles come up. You can do the same thing in Bing and Yahoo. And, um, and then it'll give you information. For me, I like to still use Jaxi. And um, this is what I do. I'll enter in the keyword so that I can see what the search results look like. And so this is pulling data directly from Google um, and it will tell me the first position, second position, what uh, articles are at the top of the rankings for this keyword. And as you can see, I can um, see the article title, I can see the URL, I can click and it'll open it in a different tab. And what I like to do is read each one. I like to go and read the articles that are top ranking and I'll take notes um, or I'll keep a mental tab of what content they already have in these articles. Um, and I will um, go and create an article that addresses the content in more depth. I also will um, address gaps that they might have missed. Um, and I will reference them if I need to. Like if I use um, like ideas from their content, then I reference them to give them credit for um, 
the idea that they gave me, but also by interlinking their article inside of my post, it helps with search engine optimization because one of the metrics in search engine optimization is um, having outbound links. So of course you don't want to have a large, um, a large number in comparison to the content that you have, but you do want to have a few outbound links that add further credibility to the content that you have. So this is another tool that I use. If you look, you can see it also gives me more information. Um, it'll tell me the word count on the pay on the post that is on page one. Um, it tells me how many links, how many backlinks, what the Alexa rank is. So all of this information um, helps me even further to decide my approach when I create my own content on this same topic. Um, the word count, the links on site, backlinks. Um, and you can go down and evaluate all these things. And these, this information plus the information uh, on YouTube, doing the, the research, plus the information on Pinterest, and uh, can help you. Then you can also use, um, Jaxi has the affiliate program tab. So let's say, um, let's see if there's any products on ClickBank that talk about um, content creation. So here, this Jaxi is pulling in any um, affiliate products that also talk about content creation. Now for this one, all of these 50% commissions, so if these products are quality products, which would require even more research, but if I would have to go and see if these products are quality products, and if they are quality products that would actually t teach a person more information about content creation, that is something that I can add in. If, um, like going back to the a different niche, let's talk about the nursery rhymes again. And so there's no products on ClickBank about that, but let's see, Commission Junction, Link Share. Okay, so. Um, so here, if I was writing an article about um, nursery rhymes, then I can go and check out these products and see if they can be relevant to the audience that I'm writing about um, on my article. Okay, so that's something else that's nice um, that you can use to add into your efficiency when you're writing because sometimes when we're writing we want to I mean most times we're writing and we want to monetize the articles as well so when we are writing and we need to find affiliate products or something to um, recommend to give even more information because a blog post can only give so much you know um, but if you want to satisfy um, people who want more information than what you were able to give in the blog post, then that can be helpful to find affiliate products, to find, um, you know, that things that you can recommend. Another thing is you can look at um, what trends are out there. Now, uh, Jaxi pulls in from Google Trends, from Alexa Topics, from Amazon Bestsellers, and from Twitter Trends. So you can go and you can look up a topic and see what trends are out there um, and add it to your brainstorm queue. And then it will help you to find um, trends so you can connect whatever topic you're writing about to a, a, a trending topic and that can also skyrocket your traffic. So. Um, let's, another research tool that I use is called SpyFu, and SpyFu helps you to evaluate what's working for other people in the search rankings and in pay advertising. So you can enter a website, maybe you have an idea um, of something you want to write about, or even a niche, 
that you want to um, target and you're not sure what kind of content is working in that niche or what kind of um, you're not you you just want to know like what type of keywords or what type of things um, you should be targeting you can enter in a website and it will show you like now this isn't 100 percent accurate but it will show you and help you to guide your content marketing strategy and help you with some of your research it's just a component of your overall research so this is something else that can help with your um, research and your research efficiency would directly impact your content creation and your efficiency with that um, all of these methods are not just used for creating blog content I've also used them for creating content for my books um, because you definitely want to have a content that's superior in the market that's one of the things that will give you a leg up and help you with um, help you with sales because you'll have a quality product um, okay so another thing is to use content repurposing to increase efficiency so I like to listen to um, authors like Joanna Penn Winston Churchill and Dan Brown um, especially when I was doing a lot of book writing and they all use dictation um, to help with their efficiency their software is like dragon naturally speaking that will help you to um, where you can just say the content you can say the words and you can speak out the content and then it will type it for you so for some people who um, either you know you have problems with writing with your hands or you write so much um, and you want to give your hands a break or you just prefer speaking than typing um, dictation can be a great option and for some of them they've said that they were able to double triple or even quadruple their writing speed by practicing dictation so um, and these authors they're very productive have they they're also able to create lots of words of content Dan Brown is a very successful author with lots of books in the market and so um, these methods work dragon um, or transcription you can use sites like fiverr.com um, to hire people who will transcribe your audios for you and by transcribing the audios and putting them into um, by transcribing the audios and putting them onto your blog post it can affect it can increase your efficiency you can do the same thing with books or anything like that some people will have um, a recorder while they are walking or while they're doing other activities and they'll record themselves talking about a topic then have somebody transcribe and somebody else edit and they have content out so <clears throat> that's you don't have to necessarily improve your typing speed as the only means to increase your efficiency another thing is content batching um, when there's several processes in creating content so maybe you take time and you you break down each one for example um, keyword research um, and if you're blogging keyword research is a portion um, if you're writing books if you're doing any type of online marketing keyword research is an essential part of um, creating the content so you can like for me I, I use site content and as you can see I have 247 articles unpublished that means I've taken the time to compile some ideas and some keywords I'll take time and just do lots of keyword research and create drafts of articles and, and finish writing them later um, also if I have a spontaneous idea I might I keep a notepad or a bullet journal and write down the idea 
Um, sometimes I'll write the idea in Trello or something like that so that I don't lose those ideas that come up to come to me spontaneously. Um, I might email myself and um, so that I'll keep the idea and then I can do keyword research later. Um, but staying focused on one task and not getting a spontaneous idea and diverting to a different task that can also um, help increase your efficiency. So batching the brainstorming process and keyword research can really help. Um, rather than doing keyword research and then switching to gather images and then switching to graphic design and switching to blog promotion, um, you can batch processes so that way you're using one tool, you don't have to keep switching tabs, you're using one tool and then you do all your brainstorming, all your keyword research at one time. You move on to the next uh, portion of your system. So most of the time, I use Jaxi. And um, when you decide, like if you want more information about Jaxi, you can try it out for free. I'll leave information about that in the description box below. Um, <clears throat> OK. So, batching blog draft creation is also something I do. Again, I create my content in a platform called Site Content, and I've shown you Site Content here. And so, basically, um, like you can see, some all of my unpublished posts, and then my published posts. And you can see that my all-time words written inside of site content is 708,577 words. And I started using site content um, last January. So this is what I've done in a little over a year. When you go into um, my post, let's go into one. Um, this is what site content does. You you. You can you put your title here. Um, you write out your post. You can easily interlink. Like if you want to add a link inside, which is common for affiliate marketing. Um, another nice thing is that um, it will pull up the other articles on your blog. So if you want to interlink. Uh, posts that are already published on your blog, it's really easy. You don't actually have to switch tabs and go to the blog and search for the post. Um, this is something that majorly adds to my efficiency. Um, so you can just simply search. Well, say, say I want, I can just click use this link, insert, and then it'll have the hyperlink. And the hyperlink me uh, will make it easy for when readers come to my blog and they want to find more information or um, they want to visit a reference that I've added in, then they can just click and it'll take them to that place. Um, so yeah, you can it, it accepts HTML. So you can just copy HTML or embed YouTube videos inside of site content. Um, <clears throat> another nice thing I really like about it is that when you're ready to publish um, your post, you don't actually have to manually log into the website through WordPress. You can just click publish and you'll choose. Let's show you an example. Let's go to something I haven't published yet. And let's say, so let's say I'm ready to publish this, which I'm not. So, um, but when the time comes that I do want to publish it, then I would just go here, publish, and I would find which website I want to publish it to. Um, and then I would choose which. Um, author and I can change my URL and publish it and it sends it to that 
website. So that's something that's hugely increased my efficiency because I can create content for several different websites. I've done it for clients. I've done it for, um, I have my husband's website. Um, I have different projects that, you know, <laughs> um, I, for the future basically. And if I want to work on those projects, then I can easily work on them without, um, without having to switch. So let me go back. So you can batch blog draft creation. And I do that in site content. So once I've done my keyword research, then I'll create a draft of a blog post. And I keep those there. So when I sit down to write content, when my kids are napping or um, when, when uh, I actually have the discipline time to focus on fleshing out the content, um, I just go in and start writing into a draft I've already created. I don't go and sit down and do the research and, and do the draft creation and everything in one sitting. Um, usually, you know, I have all of these drafts and I'll think about which post I'm going to, which things I'm going to be writing about, which videos I'll be creating for the next day or the next week or the next month. And I start doing research well ahead of time. Um, I also like to um, write about the same like topic or niche for a while. So for example, if, um, if I'm doing research about email marketing, I might uh, write my posts, all email marketing reviews, all how to's about email marketing, like just write a bunch of stuff in the same niche for a while. And uh, that helps because you're not having to go and do separate research about everything. Sometimes the research will connect. Um, then I also use templates. And that's another feature I really love about site content because um, going back to my dashboard, you can use templates. You, you can create a template based off of a format you really like or that really works for your readers. So if you know that it's easy for them to read maybe 300 words and then a subheading and then a heading and then maybe you have subheadings and um, maybe you have a, a consistent format. Um, then you can make a template. So every time when you create a draft, you will create it from a template. Um, so as you can see, I have quite a few templates in here that work for different blogs that I have. Um, like I have kingdomofheavenambassador.com. This is a template that works well there. Then I have my business blog. Uh, this is a template that works there. Um, I do reviews. I have buyer's guides. I have comparisons. Um, and some of the reviews, for example, uh, when you review like technology versus when you uh, review um, a training course, it might be different specs that you have to include in the review for it to be valuable to the readers. So once you kind of get in the groove and you understand um, which content they're looking for when they're looking for hosting, which uh, what are their questions? When they're looking for um, a new computer, what are their biggest questions? Then you can add that into a template. So every time you review computers, every time you review hosting, every time you review nursery rhymes, then you can make sure that those specific subjects are inside of your review. Um, okay, so um, so I have here assembly lines increase production speed and uniformity. And so that is so true. When you have templates, when you have a, a process and you have a process to do your research, to do your keyword research, to um, get your information, to um, to choose your content strategy, well, all of these things are processes 
then it, it definitely increases your speed and it increases your uniformity. It becomes something that you can tell other people. Um, this week we'll be writing all about email marketing. So um, I want you to do all the reviews on email marketing. I want you to do all this on email marketing. Whenever you uh, research email marketing software, these are the things I want you to say about it. Like, it adds speed and it adds uniformity. It adds clarity. It makes it easier for you to be a leader. Um, it makes it easier for you to manage the quality and things like that. And overall, it helps your business. So um, once with outsourcing and with building a business, period, I strongly believe in becoming self-employed before you start hiring because otherwise... Uh, it makes it harder for you to give directions when you don't know how to do it yourself. And um, it also makes it where it's, it takes a longer time for you to get a return on your investment in your business when, uh, when you hire out so early. Um, it makes it harder for you to be efficient because you have to train at the same time you're learning. Uh, so it, it just, I believe in, uh, in most scenarios, I recommend outsourcing after you're self-employed. So pretty much you give you you do the work, you create a job for yourself, you keep working, you create an income enough that you can create a job for somebody else. Um, with that being said, once you're making money, it may be time for you to start outsourcing. And when that time comes, then there is a, a business growth blueprint that other companies use. Um, and this is one that I, I like. Um, you can outsource transcription. You can outsource full content creation. You can outsource writing, graphics, promotion, or other elements. And so, for example, sometimes um, I've, like I haven't fully hired a full-time employee, but there have been times when um, I hire people to do different parts of the content creation. For example, if there's an area where um, like I need to supplement a skill level, like for example, I write an article about legal or something like that, and I'm not a lawyer, um, then I may outsource um, some of the some of the research some of the um i might pay for a consultation with them so i can thoroughly understand a lawyer's perspective on something like it's different things like that that you can do to increase your efficiency because maybe you you might be quicker when you actually have a consultation with a lawyer um, or when you might have a consultation with an expert it might be more efficient for you to gather the information, the pros and cons like that, then for you to spend hours and hours and hours reading books that possibly may not be um, as high quality as going to the expert themselves, sitting before them and learning from them. So um, that's a different thing that you could outsource. You could outsource the research by way of sitting before an expert in a consultation. Um, you can outsource having somebody take your audio and transcribe it into words. You can outsource the entire thing, however you want to do and depending on where your business is in the growth. But um, HubSpot has a different, they have um, some information on outsourcing by team size. When you are doing content creation, they have these different uh, ways that they segment and it's called attract, convert, and close. So they have different people who are in charge of those different portions of the sales funnel. And that's a way you can do it. Um, you can have some people who are in charge of attraction, like social media, um, maybe graphics and things. You can have some people who are in charge of the conversion, maybe people who are focused on the SEO and the pop-ups and the um, you know, maybe they do raffles and engagement type of things um, or having downloads and 
things that cause people to convert into um, leads. And then you can have other people who are in charge of the close. Um, and maybe those people do the follow-up, uh, the email marketing, the webinars, or things like that. So that's another way of outsourcing. But you don't want to scale too early because you can quickly drive your business into a bad financial state. You always have to make sure that your expenses stay lower than your lifetime customer value. When you're first starting out as a startup, your lifetime customer value isn't usually what it will be in the long term. Over time, you learn how to improve your lifetime customer value. At the beginning, you might have like one product or one service or you might have several services but not uh, consistent sales volume. And so you have a metric in mind that people usually pay or that you want them to pay. But um, over time, you learn how to get retention better, how to increase loyalty, how to um, get more volume. You get better and better at those things with time. And in the beginning, your lifetime customer value is the lowest. And um, as a result of that, if you scale too quickly and you're putting in more than you're able to um, get out, it can put you out of business. Um, so I have another article here at How to Entrepreneur on uh, customer acquisition costs and calculating that and um, trying to make sure that your customer acquisition cost um, stays below your lifetime customer value is very important. So um, I have uh, a breakdown here of how you can split up your content marketing team uh, like HubStop, HubSpot recommended. So they recommend having the attraction people, conversion people, and closing people. And so I have some uh, breakdown of what that will look like here on the blog. So you can have content writers, SEO specialists, social media managers, and designers in the attraction area. Then conversion would be like landing pages, opt-in pages, email marketing, lead scoring, and nurturing, all those people. Um, then you can have the closers, the sales team, the live chat, the um, you know those type of people. So... Um, Marketing specialist Mike Volpe recommends focusing most of your marketing team on attraction and then on closing by using proportions like two attraction marketers and one closer for a team of three and five attraction marketers to two converters to two closers for a team of seven and so on. So you can see more information about that on how to entrepreneur. Um, then Number five, what I do to create content efficiency is applying Parkinson's law. Parkinson's law says work expands to fill the time available for its completion. In other words, I use a timer. Um, so I will set a timer. Um, you can use your stove. You can use your microwave. You can use um, where, wherever you have a timer. And you set the time and then you um, you try to be as productive as you can within that time frame. If you have a hard time paying attention for long periods, then you might want to break things down into 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, um, and you set the timer for 10 minutes and you work on one task during that period. Um, and you'll be surprised how much more efficient you are just from having that timer. Um, that pressure and the accountability of having a timer or time sessions um, it invokes the scarcity mentality inside of us, and it makes you want to work fast. Um, it's like a competition, internal competition. And the other thing I do to um, increase writing efficiency is improve practicing the vital skills. So um, some of the vital skills is typing speed, reading speed, um, speed of use with the technology, um, writing processes, how quickly you use them. And basically you can just practice typing. 
you know, they have typing courses, they have uh, different typing programs that you can use to uh, practice typing more efficiently. You can take classes on um, how to read faster. They have different techniques that you can use. They have techniques that you can use to improve your memory. And by you improving your memory, you won't have to go and reference information as much. Um, by improving the speed of how you use technology, then that can help you as well. And just paying for the right technology, sometimes we might be cheap, you know, or try to save money in ways that it's not um, efficient. And you have to think about efficiency as well. So for me, I have found that uh, one of the most, one of the things that really improves my efficiency the most is using site content for my content writing. Prior to using site content, I would write directly into WordPress, and I'll show you how that's done too. Because sometimes I still um, go back and tweak my articles and optimize them directly into WordPress, and that when I optimize them directly in WordPress, then I um, go in and maybe add content directly and when I do that I'll show you what that looks like but um, overall writing the majority of my content in site content is much more efficient um, I want to show you um, just starting a post when you start a post you can choose from starting from starting a blank document or starting from a writing template. So for me, most of the time, I start from a template. So let's just go to the keyword rich content page. Um, so when I go in here, a, another nice thing is um, this library of over a million images. So I don't actually have to leave site content to go to sites like Unsplash or Pixabay or Pexel, Pexels or Raw Pixel or all of these um, sites where they have free stock images, I can simply go here and let's say I want an image about, um, let's say I want a food image. And I can go here and find an image, a food image. And you, as you can see, there are some really nice images that they have here and I can choose any one of them and size it however I want choose the alignment put in my meta tag so that it'll be optimized for the search engines and um, now this isn't the keyword for this article but let's say the keyword that I was trying to rank for is food highly competitive but that's this is the example so in that case it'll place it there and then all of the work that I do in here the meta tags meta descriptions the um, interlinking everything that I do inside of site content when I click publish and it goes over to my WordPress website all of that information carries over so I don't have to go back and redo my SEO um, inside of WordPress I can just simply do the SEO everything inside of site content publish it to WordPress move on to creating the next piece of content um, that is huge for me um, so let's go back okay so choosing the technology I have a post called 23 home office supplies for home-based businesses and I talk about different things that you can use um, for me like I use a Chromebook a lot of the time to create my content but you want to choose a piece of technology that you can write on that's easy for you to understand for me I like to um, I like to do research and walk around and sometimes I'll have my daughter on my hip and um, so the Chromebook is lightweight so for me, it's easy for me to hold it in one hand and hold her in another hand. Um, but you have to decide what's appropriate for you. Um, I also have an Apple. 
and that works for me in certain situations and then I have another computer that works for me in certain situations so you have to decide which piece of technology is perfect for you and it might be more than one like in my scenario I have uh, more than one uh, computer for different scenarios and situations um, so you want to invest where you need to to make sure you get the technology and tools that will make you the most efficient sometimes um, the most efficient isn't the most cost effective but that's it is what it is um, okay and I want to show you if you're interested in more information about content efficiency about search engine optimization about um, creating content whether it's creating content that sells or creating content um, you know that's popular or whatever it is um, the place where I refer people for internet marketing training is wealthy affiliate and the reason is because um, like here the owner has created this online entrepreneur certification and there's a lot of information here about creating content so let's take a look um, so if you type in content you you have understanding keywords you have creating custom menus choosing a niche um, getting ready for the search traffic and then there's a lot of um, things that are contributed by um, other members there's also live training that is being done on content um, amplifying your writing efficiency keyword um, comprehension researching products and services in your niche um, and right now the live training uh, series that we're on is on YouTube so if you're interested in video marketing then right now would be a perfect time to take a look at some of the upcoming live events that we have um, over at Wealthy Affiliate so I've been a member there for one year and a lot of the information that I've been able to get from there from Wealthy Affiliate has been very instrumental in my content efficiency and the mastery um, that I have in internet marketing overall and um, so I highly recommend them if you're interested in that you can actually set up a free account and you'll be able to get um, 10 free training lessons so you'll get um, all of level one on from the online entrepreneur certification and it'll teach you a lot about understanding how to make money online choosing a niche building your own niche website setting up your website um, getting your site ready for search creating your initial content creating your menus understanding keywords and all of this content right here will help you so much to get started if you're looking to make money online or you um, are looking to amplify or optimize um, a current business um, all of this will be helpful for you in addition to that you can also get feedback on your content um, and by getting feedback on your content it helps with your efficiency as well because you'll learn what people are looking for um, a lot of people uh, don't have access to feedback or you're getting feedback from people who haven't been trained in internet marketing and so it's not as valuable and it still makes it difficult for you to um, make good content you can also request comments and you'll have um, more people who engage with your content and overall creating content efficiently and creating a uh, content that is engaging and exciting and all this is really a habit it's really a practice and by you just getting started then you'll be able to hone your craft and for me um, my first book took me a long time I mean maybe not in comparison with others because some people start their book and never actually publish it for me um, I, I started it and I published it but it was the most lengthy process of all of the books that I published after the first one was done 
the other ones were much easier and the 15th was probably the easiest um and for creating content when i created my first 100,000 words it wasn't nearly as easy as my 700,000 you know so that's also something to be mindful of is that practice practice you know um if you are looking for help with creating content or you're looking for uh, more information, more assistance. Um, I offer coaching at Wealthy Affiliate to premium members there. Um, if you follow my link in the description box below, then I'll be your premium coach and I'll be able to help you with your content efficiency. Um, I'll help you to find whatever tools you need. If you have questions, you can shoot them over to me. I offer premium coaching and is unlimited private message coaching at Wealthy Affiliate. So that's something that you can take advantage of. Um, hopefully these tips have been helpful for you. Um, this video was very thorough. So um, I'm sure that some of these tips have been helpful for you. Um, if you would, if you like this video, please leave a thumbs up. And if you want to see more information like it, please subscribe to this channel and I'll be creating more content on how you can um, grow your business from idea to enterprise and also lifestyle topics as you bring them up and you show interest in them along the way. So that's all I have for today. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye.